Hi, I'm Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop and we're here today with Jill Finley. She's gonna tell us today about how to make bias stems. And bias tape. I use bias tape a lot to embellish my quilts and it's um, one of the easiest things you can do in applique because it fills up a lot of space. You see this big wide border I've got here and there's very few pieces of applique, just a couple flowers and a couple leaves but the vine fills up the space. So I've also used bias tape on this quilt back here to create this little gate and we've got a couple other good examples to show you as we go along. But first of all, let's get started and I'll show you how we, how we make it, okay? So we'll start with cutting our strips. And I've taken a piece of fabric, I've cut this in half at the fold, but from the width of the fabric you just cut a strip. Usually your pattern will tell you how wide. It's just to show you how to cut bias tape. I use a ruler and it doesn't have to be the 8 inch, you can use a, a, six, a regular 6 inch ruler. So I'm going to put the 45 degree um, on the selvage edge. You can either put it on the selvage or you can put it on the side as long as they're straight. And it's important to be on the bias so that you've got a bend so that you right. can move the vine on the quilt. So we just do the first cut that way. And then let's set this aside. This is where we're going to cut our strips. And now I'm going to turn this so that this bias edge is straight, straight. for me. And then I will measure off of this edge um, however, however wide I need these to be depending on which bias tape maker I'm using. So today I've got a couple of bias tape makers here. This one is the 3 8 inch, it's a purple one, and these are made by Clover. And this one's a quarter inch, and it's green. There's also a um, yellow one that's a half inch, and a pink a one, pink one. Uh -huh. that's three quarters. And I don't know exactly what it says in the instructions, I think it has you cut double the width of the finished size. I like to add an extra eighth inch, okay. and that helps to allow for the folds. So for the 3 8 inch, what size would I be cutting then? So 3 eighths plus 3 eighths is 6 eighths, which is 3 then, quarters uh -huh, plus an eighth is 7 eighths. Uh huh, 7 eighths. Okay, now I'm going to just cut my 7 eighths strip and I'll cut a couple of those. I'm going to mm -hmm. cut a couple and then we'll feed them through the bias tape maker. Okay, so now we're just take them to our ironing surface. Let's bring it over here. And um, we've got our strips here. And when you're handling your bias strips, be gentle with them because they're very stretchy and we don't want them to get out of shape. So just gently move them. And then we need some spray starch, which we've got right here. This is very important. I spray my strips with starch first, because if you sprayed them after they came out of the bias tape maker, it would just unfold the folds. So we're going to spray them first. I just press the edge that I'm going to feed through so that it's dry. Okay. Oh, I'm going to turn off the steam. So I don't want any steam because I'm trying to dry the starch. Just press that edge. And then, now this is kind of stiff because the starch is dry on it and I just feed it upside down through this bias tape maker and then turn it over and you can see that the fabric is there and then you just advance it through either with your awl or with a straight pin and this is important, I pin it into my ironing surface. Let's move this one out of the way. So I anchor it there and then as I start pulling it I just stick my iron in there. And you're just pulling with the iron almost. I actually push it with the iron because if you if you pull ahead of it a little bit, it kind of unfolds a little bit. I like to push it right with the iron. And then I just kind of check to make sure that that's centered. It's not all up on one side or the other side. So that the folds are folding right to the center. And I just leave my iron there long enough so that the edges are nice and crisp and don't come unfolded. Do you starch again or that's No, all? because if I were to starch now, then that would unfold. unfold. So the starch is important, it doesn't say that in the instructions, but that is really important because then when we go to shape this piece of bias tape, we turn it over, we have all of our raw edges on the inside, and now we can shape it with our iron, and at this point, before I didn't use steam because I was trying to dry the starch, and now I'm going to turn my steam on because as, as I steam this, I can reposition the fibers in the bias tape. So we're going to like shape this into a little curve, and I'll add a little bit of steam. and it's going to take that shape. That's awesome. And then what's awesome is because it's got the starch in it, you can pick it up, move it over to your project, and it retains its shape. Then you take my Jalali Apple glue and glue it down in place. Now the pattern came with um, some letter guides, uh -huh, and I just made copies of those letter guides, and I take them right to my ironing surface, and right on top of the um, guide I'm going to press with some steam and just follow the guide so I can get the bias tape in exactly the shape. The shape, uh huh. Okay, and then I need some scissors and I'll just trim this off. So I'm just going to trim that off about a quarter inch away from the edge of this pattern and 
just so it's in the general shape because then when once we attach it it will it'll be perfect so let me see a quarter inch away thank you there we go but at this point I put the guide underneath so that I can see through and then I've got my shaped S right here and then I take a little bit of glue this is apple glue it's a product I developed for basting your pieces in place before you applique and I'm just going to put a, a drop of glue in the center of this guide about every half inch to inch and you're just and doing small dots just small dots you don't need very much and it's really sticky it's going to hold things in place I actually stitched these by machine so I want them to be firmly attached so they don't shift when I've got them under the machine okay so that's all done and then to, to uh, finish the edge I'm going to just turn this under a quarter inch just put a drop of glue there turn that back a quarter inch and I'll have a little bit of flag that sticks out and if you watch my applique video you'll learn how to deal with that flag if I was spelling strawberries then I would move and do the T next ST and there's an R on another thing and move the A and put them in the positions you need as you glue them down this can be used on borders in lots of ways, pillowcases, uh -huh. names. Yep. You can do pretty much anything. There's with a these. lot you can do with it. Well, it was great learning how to do the bias tape. Thank you so much. I love being here and I love showing you all these fun techniques and I hope that everybody learned something good from it. Make sure you watch all of Jill's applique videos on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.